HSC Core 1, Health Priorities in Australia. This podcast supports the focus question, what are the priority issues for improving Australia's health? The focus group for this inquiry is Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander peoples. For the period 2005 to 2007, the life expectancy for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples is 67 years for males and 73 years for females. In contrast, the life expectancy for non-Indigenous males is 79 years and for non-Indigenous females 83 years. This represents a gap of 12 years for males and 10 years for females. In general, the death rates for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples are three times that of the non-Indigenous population and deaths from preventable causes such as accidents and lifestyle related diseases such as diabetes and some cancers is 12 to 13 times higher. The major causes of death include cardiovascular disease, mental illness, respiratory diseases, accidents, self-harm, diabetes and cancer. Death rates are highest in a 35 to 54 year age group where the indigenous death rate is 5 to 6 times higher and in the 25 to 44 and 45 to 54 year age groups where the rate is 4 times higher. While there has been a decline in the number of deaths, it is not of the same rate as for other Australians and therefore the gap is widening. While cancer rates are higher amongst the non-indigenous population, the reverse is true for injury and diabetes in the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander population. The infant mortality rate is a good indicator of population health. Where infant mortality rates are low, populations enjoy good health and longer life expectancies. For Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, the infant mortality rate is three to four times higher than the national average, and they die at the rate of three to four times that of the non-Indigenous population. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander babies are most likely to be born with lower birth weights owing to maternal smoking, die from injury and poisoning and respiratory diseases such as asthma. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children suffer from common childhood illnesses at higher rates. Middle ear infections such as otitis media, which if untreated can cause deafness, has a major impact on educational attainment, school attendance and future employment prospects. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples are more likely to be hospitalised than the general population. For males and females, kidney dialysis owing to diseases such as diabetes and respiratory diseases such as emphysema account for the majority of hospitalisations. For females, pregnancy and childbirth account for the second most common cause of hospitalisation ahead of respiratory diseases. And in males, injury is the second most common reason for hospitalisation. Sociocultural factors have a big impact on the health of all populations. Determinants such as education, employment and housing all contribute to the absence or prevalence of illness and disease. For example, unemployed Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples report higher rates of cardiovascular disease, tend to be obese and are more likely to drink at risky levels. Poor educational attainment increases the likelihood of psychological distress, increases the risk of drinking and smoking and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples report lower levels of physical activity. Other factors such as communal approaches to parenting and a lack of culturally appropriate services to support traditional approaches to health and family welfare also impact on health. <music> Colonisation and dispossession, for example, have robbed Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples of their identity and culture. Many traditional approaches to health care and the foods enjoyed by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have been lost, and they now suffer from a variety of lifestyle illnesses brought to bear on them through this process. A loss of land has also contributed to a loss of traditional lifestyle enjoyed by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, including lack of access to traditional medicines and hunting. Policies that have discriminated against Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have also impacted on their health. The forced removal of children from their families, assimilation policies and a lack of access to legal and political systems until 1967 have meant that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have been denied natural justice. Many of their traditions, such as the medical care provided by their elders, 
are often seen as incompatible with Western medical practices. Traditional approaches to medicine, communal family and parenting approaches, and the emphasis on land for ceremony and food have led to a lack of compatibility with our way of life. This conflict is one reason why socio-cultural factors have impacted on the health and welfare of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Socioeconomic determinants include income, educational attainment and employment. Generally those Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who are unemployed report lower levels of health, higher rates of mortality and suicide, especially for males, mental illnesses, homelessness, and their children have a higher incidence of chronic disease. Poor rates of literacy also affect employment prospects and limit informed health choices. The lower socioeconomic status of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples means that they make less use of preventative and screening health services and greater use of medical services owing to ill health. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples are therefore more likely to suffer from cardiovascular disease and show more than one risk factor for diseases. Housing is related to quality of life and for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who report lower levels of home ownership and who often live in overcrowded dwellings, mental and physical health is often compromised. This is especially true for many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who live in substandard housing and lack access to clean water and sanitation. The environment plays a significant role in determining health status. Many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples live in rural and remote locations and this is a determinant which has its own impact, such as reducing access to services and increasing the risk of certain lifestyle diseases such as some cancers. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander males are most at risk of interpersonal violence, often the result of the neighbourhood in which they find themselves living. The environment itself can also lack access to employment, particularly for those who live on the fringes of the city and in remote locations. Living in rural environments also limit the type of available employment and many employed in rural work have increased risk of injury. In general, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples suffer from a number of risk factors that affect their health status and this multiplying factor increases their health inequity. Individual responsibilities for health vary with the capacity individuals have in regards to maintaining their health. Health is a social construct and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples often have limited means to carry out their traditional approaches to health care. These are often incompatible with Western ideas about health care and therefore they are not often available to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Individual factors such as age, gender, language, cultural barriers, and educational attainment can enhance or limit access to services. As we have seen, educational attainment and employment levels have a significant impact on health care and health status. Social factors such as transport, costs and the availability of services impact on the choices that individuals make. Government interventions such as the Northern Territory intervention can force people to seek health care. However, there is an onus in governments to provide it. Individuals do, however, have a role to play in seeking out services and accessing health care when they need it. All levels of government have a responsibility for the provision of health care for all people in Australia. The federal government has a particular responsibility for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health care, but this is shared with state governments. Community initiatives such as the Health for Life initiative supports local Indigenous health services to provide for an increased number of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander trained health workers in the community with an emphasis on men's issues and support for mothers and children. Aboriginal community controlled health services and Aboriginal health services help Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples overcome obstacles such as where they live, cost and language barriers by providing services such as immunisation, screening and counselling programs. These initiatives are supported by government at the community level and also provide for clinical care, education and promotion. 
they are overseen by local Aboriginal communities ensuring the delivery of holistic, comprehensive and culturally appropriate health care where self-determination is a focus. The Office of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health provides funds and grants to 245 organisations to support improved health initiatives. The Aboriginal Health and Medical Research Council of New South Wales controls over 60 Aboriginal controlled health organisations in New South Wales. They also work with other government departments to deliver a range of health care initiatives, develop policy and evaluate progress made in health reforms and health care. Agencies such as the National Aboriginal Community Controlled Organisation work with other departments such as the Department of Housing, Community Services and Indigenous Affairs to provide a range of health and welfare services. They work with Indigenous communities to run hundreds of local health services, some small and some very large. The Northern Territory Emergency Response was an initiative of the Howard Government and was designed to address the immediate needs of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples living in the Northern Territory. A range of initiatives included the provision of healthcare services, educational, social and welfare reforms and laws that limited access to alcohol and welfare payments. A part of the response was to initiate health care checks for children under 16 years as a means for identifying common health concerns and plan for a coordinated delivery of services to treat these illnesses. Music